here we are talking about the problem solving course. I am Maria and this is Craig. So I want to ask the question that is really interests me, which is about dreams. What are your dreams about children and mathematics? Wow. <laughs> I know it's big, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I'm a, I'm a math teacher. I teach high school. And so I see the struggles that children have every day trying to learn mathematics. Um, they come to us often with uh, not enjoying math at all. And so <clears throat> I also have two young daughters that I would like to see at an early age develop a love for mathematics. And, uh, you know, I want to see the students that I teach in high school uh, not just get it and be able to do math, but actually love math, love seeing patterns, uh, love playing with numbers, uh, love to understand this language that helps us make sense of our world. So your dreams have to do with feelings, with what yeah. people feel. Yeah. Well, in particular with good ones. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So how does this love happen? What does it mean to love math? Uh, I, I think it's um, seeing the, the beauty and the wonder of the, the patterns and, and numbers that, that we see. Um, seeing how math is used in uh, everyday life, uh, how you can see mathematical patterns in nature, uh, in the things that human beings create. Um, it's just a joy in, in seeing these puzzles and these connections. Uh, that happens. Um, you know, I, I've always loved puzzles and games like that. Uh, my daughters, I see them enjoying that as well. And it's really heartbreaking when you see students come into your classroom that don't have that joy. They actually fear or, or really hate coming into a math class um, because they, they haven't learned not just how to do the procedures, but they haven't seen the beauty and the, the, the wonder of math uh, in their lives. So uh, you see this beauty and patterns and puzzles everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and um, how have you been sharing it with your kids so far, with your daughters? Well, I, I come home from work and I tell stories. And uh, my oldest daughter especially is uh, jumping right in and asking me. Uh, actually, even last night, she was uh, she's five, but she and, and my wife together, they were creating math equations for me to solve. <laughs> so she was trying to make it really hard so that daddy couldn't to, understand to get it. daddy. Yeah, right. so it was, it was like 10 numbers to be added together. And uh, I talked to her all the time about, you know, different strategies and ways that I look at it. I immediately was trying to add tens with all of these numbers mm -hmm. to get to a quicker answer and, and helping her to see those patterns. Uh, and so we played around last night with um, uh, uh, drawing pictures of circles and creating rectangular shapes out of them or, or square shapes and introducing square numbers. And so she was pretty what the next square number would be and then we you know put in some more circles and see what we could find and so just playing games like that and telling stories about what I do at work has helped to engage her interest in in patterns and numbers okay stories <coughs> games and your daughter making her own problems I yeah. hear this happens does it happen a lot that she makes up problems um, yeah, she likes to, she asks questions and she, you know, if I'm asking her a question, she'll ask one back and, and uh, you know, try to get bigger or more. <laughs> taking, term, taking turns is nice, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Little kids like it. And how about stories and drawings? Does she like to tell stories? Does she like to draw? Yeah, she loves stories. Um, my, my youngest, who's three, will read all day. Um, but we have several books that have different, uh, you know, counting games in them or, um, or, or stories that just have patterns. A lot of children's books have that in, in a, as a story mechanism, mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's a mathematical pattern as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we do that a lot. It's a lot of fun. It's almost like a scavenger hunt for, for, for patterns and stories, what you described. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, we're always looking for that. And, you know, what do you see in this picture and what do you notice about this uh, connections? And yeah. And your girls like to do that, you're saying, right? They do. Yeah. yeah. They like to hunt for that. Okay. So this is kind of similar to what I hope to do in this course, because okay. um, you can take these problems and uh, actually they are up already. So you can look at them. I, I already have, yeah. Yeah. Okay, you found them good. Uh, so this week we are just planning very brief plans uh, of what we'll do with the kids to invite okay. them to tell stories, to invite them to change the problems, to see what's going on. Do you have some ideas? You have looked at the problems? Uh, I have, and um, I just wanted to clarify, the, mm -hmm. the, the PDF has several different problems. Am I just supposed to choose one from each of the techniques? Yeah. Or am I supposed to target one for my circle of <laughs> kids? Okay. Uh, you can go about it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Um, the, math here, the mathematical, yes. So, okay. uh, the either or. So, so what I am saying is, oh, boss, uh, you okay. can ch take a problem from each of the three sets and okay. kind of just adapt it a bit and do that. Or you can take several problems and adapt them. Now, mm -hmm. it's a really ch challenging adaptation to adapt that high school Olympiad problem to a three-year-old, right, okay. but maybe yeah. someone will tackle it. I don't know. We'll give it a shot, eh? <laughs> Right. Uh, well, it will be something similar in the spirit, but probably not in the particular math. Right, right. right. I don't know. Uh, well, I have, a, I have a second circle of kids because next okay. year I'm teaching a, uh, a numeracy block for eighth grade mm -hmm. um, and we're targeting our struggling learners. And so taking that high school Olympiad problem and adapting it for those kids may be another way that I could go about it. This would be very interesting uh, because uh, it will help you in your task. So you can put these plans there as well. Just, I think we have another person already who put up two adaptations for her two groups of kids. Okay. So you can you can do that. You can answer okay. separately or just just note uh, what what it uh, it's about. Uh, the minus is you don't have these kids right now, so the adaptation will be theoretical at this point. You you won't right. be able to tell us how it went. Yeah. Unless you capture an, an eighth grader for July. <laughs> <laughs> One from the neighborhood, right? Right. Uh, well, yeah. see if you can. It will help actually to prepare, but it may okay. be, uh, I don't know if it's plausible or not to do on yeah. the short notice. Okay. I'll we'll focus on the younger kids because they're in the house, so they can't get away from <laughs> Easy to catch. Okay. Yeah. But uh, you can think about it. If you have ideas, draw them down for the people because the, there are eighth graders in this course. Maybe someone will run your ideas too. Great. Okay. So, so that may help. Okay. So um, you are experienced in this in these matters. So I'm asking you... Uh, in another hard question now, as someone who's experienced and already doing it. So what do you hope to learn here? It's a course, it's a peer course, so we're all researchers here, but still we're learning. So yeah. what do you hope to learn? Well, I, I may be experienced in, you know, in teaching, but uh, this particular, you know, adapting problems for a variety of age groups, and I would say for a variety of, of learners, uh, is something that I, I have not done a lot of, um, and especially with this new numeracy block that we are uh, trying to implement at my school, it seems appropriate to um, adapt for a variety of learning styles mm -hmm. and to be able to use a, a problem that has access for all of the learners, that um, there's differentiation happening there and allows them to, to come in uh, regardless of where their level of learning is. And so I'd, I'd love to be able to do that so that these kids aren't feeling like, oh, we're just doing remedial math. Mm -hmm. We want them to be able to do the same math that other kids their age are doing, but mm -hmm. we just need to have a different entry point for them. And so I, I, that's the main thing I want to learn from the class. If, uh, so, so it's basically <clears throat> instead of saying, okay, this is really low level something, 
period. Right. You yeah. you kind of, uh, if I can borrow an analogy from computer games, you are saying this is a game with many levels. Yeah. And yeah. it's the same game. You just start at yeah. level one and go. Yeah. So, and some kids will fly through the first levels and be able to get to a higher level mm-hmm. quickly, uh, but others need to start at that first level and build their understanding of the game, or in this case, the problem, in order to do better. And one of the points uh, I hope we make with this, and I hope we'll see this, is some people s- stay with this more hands-on levels or younger adaptations, for reasons that have to do with other, as you said, with styles or other yeah. measures. Because some, some, I hear some young voices. Yes, that's my girls, yeah. Hey. Okay, so uh, may, maybe they like to tell stories more. So <laughs> high-level problems may be a bit more abstract, but yeah. uh, people who may want to, to add the stories there or to, to draw pictures or do, do things of that nature. Yeah. And it's okay to stay at a beginner, at, at starter levels f- for this aspect. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. So this is your big learning here, right? The adaptations for the same people so they feel good and can progress. Yeah, and, and so that, again, because of that desire to see them have that joy and wonder of math, if they have access to these interesting problems, they can discover that, and that gives them then the ability, the desire uh, you know, to go on and, and tackle more problems and discover, again, those patterns and, and that joy of, of seeing those numbers. Mm-hmm. Well, let's see if this joy can be captured <laughs> because okay. it's, um, I, I don't know what happens with some people, they do have a lot of problems and uh, uh, they lose the joy and, and never find it. So yeah. may, maybe by changing how we go about things, we can, yeah. we can change it. So keep your dream in mind as you adapt things. <laughs> That's why we uh, ask about it at, at the start so we can keep our dreams in mind okay okay so yeah. this were my questions uh do you have more questions about the course any ideas at the start what do you think uh i don't have anything right now i just uh, as far as um connecting with the other uh participants this is mostly going to be through the uh the question and answer boards is that how that works and i'm mm-hmm. posting and commenting mm-hmm. on what other people are saying mm-hmm. Okay, so there's no set times that I need to be at my computer. I can post whenever I'm free and right. Uh, okay. We we saw we are thinking of making some live meetings towards the end. Okay. I know already it's very hard to coordinate, so yeah. we can catch maybe about one fifth of the people at a time, if okay. that, and then it becomes logistically difficult. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so we have this one light live meeting in the beginning, kind of uh, okay. with, uh, just like we're here, here now, and then the forums. And I hope, uh, I I want to put everything on the forums because it's well sorted, so we can do that sitting on science on it. We can summarize right. it. Yes. So other people can easily use it later, too. Great. That sounds good. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, Hugs to the girls, and uh, All right. <laughs> um, I'm going to stop the recording. Okay.